Hi, it's Chris here, Scooter Router. I'm now in Boscombe and I'm just turning around. This is what they call Fisherman's Walk. Well, I say that, but when I googled it, it didn't say this was Fisherman's Walk. It says Fisherman's Walk is along the beach. Yet, us residents who've lived here a long time, we've all known this as Fisherman's Walk. I mean, I'm going to follow... I've, I've done this video before, but I turned off left. But this time I'm going right through to the beach. Which you would imagine, that's where the fishermen would have gone. Down this walk to the beach. When they get to the beach, they're not going to walk. They're going to walk. No, they're not going to walk. They're going to fish. So the fishermen would have been carrying their tackle down this stretch from Boscombe to the seafront and then seen the sea because they were obviously fishing in the sea <laughs> I mean that's where the fish are but they wouldn't have why would they have walked along the beach so I don't understand that this is Fisherman's Walk I don't care what Google says or anybody this is Fisherman's Walk and the stretch along the beach that's not Fisherman's Walk that might be smugglers escape <laughs> running along the beach to get away from the busies but the fishermen would have gone down here with with their fishing whatever they do because i don't know whether they use rods or whether they got into boats down there but they, yeah forget google this is fishermen's walk Everybody here in Boscombe and Bournemouth knows this. In fact, when I looked at the signpost at the beginning, it didn't even mention what this path was called. It didn't even give it a name. But I'm giving it a name. It's Fisherman's Walk. Now, coming, now before I, I turned off left, I turn off left, but this time I'm going straight ahead and continuing what I call Fisherman's Walk. So we're going across here now and following this pathway. Now Elka in Brussels is dutiful and as professional as I hope to be, you did request that you wanted to see Hengisbury Head. So this is what I've set out today to do. It's the 13th of August, it's a Tuesday. It's not as hot. Yesterday in Bournemouth it was about 30 degrees and I decided to stay in because it was a bit too hot for me. But today was about 21 and I thought, yeah, okay. I'll give it a go. So I set off from Boscombe intending to go to Hengsbury Head. And although I said that my scooter will do a 35 mile radius, I was a bit worried. <laughs> I thought, I hope I can get home again. But anyway, you know me, I'm adventurous, I'm daring, who dares wins. So that was my goal, go from Boscombe to Hensbury Head. Just for you, Elka, just for you. So now we're coming to the end of this uh, what I call Fisherman's Walk, and nobody else seems to, well, local people do, but 
Google that. This is, this is where the fishing room would have gone, where the fishing rods. Heading on down there, because in front of us, it's the beach. Where the fishermen go? Where the fish are? <laughs> now I'd like to add that this is my favourite place of Bournemouth. It's the East Cliff of Bournemouth. I mean, most people film where the pier is and the town square is. A lot of the videos are there. But this is one... I've been in Bournemouth, like I said, since 1954. But this is my favourite place. East Cliff of Bournemouth. And you get... I'm being a bit brave here. I'm trying to get up this mound to try and show you films of the scenic view. Because it is to get the best scenic views here at South Point. You see that path there that runs along? in front of you. I wish they'd make that like a, a real path. Then I could use my scooter to go down there. Because from that, if I was able to, I would have got off my scooter and walked down there and filmed it. Because you get a good view from this point, there you go, that, ahead there you can see Isle of Wight, it's such a clear day, Isle of Wight's there. So, I'm venturing on back now. Slowly making my way back to the safe pathway. If you look at this ground, this is what Bournemouth probably looked like before the days of Trigonwell when he changed Bournemouth into a town, if you like. But before, it was probably like this. There was no trees. It was just rugged marshland. The trees, actually, the pine trees that you like, Tailker, they came from Scotland. They brought the tree, the pine trees down from Scotland and planted them all over Bournemouth. But prior to that, Bournemouth was just a rugged marshland. Nobody really bothered with it. It was, it was just uh, boring. <laughs> And then after Trigomal introduced Bournemouth as a healthy place, which he surely is, then things started to develop to how they are today. And the pine trees, as I said, came down from Scotland and all over the place. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> all over the place. Fern Heath Road and all, all around there, Glen Furness Avenue, full of pine trees, everywhere pine trees. So I'm travelling down this this track now, and as I said, this is my favourite area of Bournemouth, but it's mostly South Bournemouth, oddly enough. See these cars? Them. They're parking over the blooming things, they're parking over the bay. Don't they realise they're blocking the pavement when they do that? Yeah. 
there should be barriers up there to stop them doing that. Look, 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 the arse is going over the bloody line all the time. Look, look, it's hard to get through. They're all doing it, look, they're all doing it. All the way through. I mean, this pavement is quite narrow as it is. And these cars are not helping, are they? Look, they're all, they're all got their noses and bumps across the bloody pavement. Sorry about swearing, but it annoys me that. I mean, carry on. We carry on. In the last uh, five years before I retired, I used to do home care and I had a lot of clients around this area. And if I had a, a call, I used to go early and I was fitter then, I had a car and I was able to park the car and walk across to the right, to the seafront or to the cliff tops uh, uh, and have a nice view. Uh, but it's uh I was not I'm not able to do that now. I was I I did think Sorry, about it. I'm not sure about that. I did think about getting off my scooter and going to the cliff tops but I didn't want to have a fall. I've got to be careful so you know I'm not too good on my feet. But anyway, turn on with this video. Hey, you can see the sky look it's a bit heavy isn't it? But it's not raining. It's warm. It's about 21 degrees. And it's windy. Well especially around here and in fact the, that wind off the sea got a lot stronger on my way back we, uh, on my way back I didn't film but this is this is the area I, that I love the most I mean it's 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 the best step but if you want to live here it's the most expensive area in fact if you look at some of those uh, buildings, I'll show you them as we go along, they cost a lot, a lot of money, I mean at the moment around this area sandbags has been uh, renowned as being the most expensive houses but I reckon around here it's got to be just as expensive as there. Now you can start to see the scenic paramanic views from this point on the east cliff of Bournemouth which I don't think you get anywhere else I mean look I'm, I'm panning around now to try and show you over there that that, that Stadland over there and obviously sandbanks before Stadland but this is a, this is what they call the, the seven miles of beach of Bournemouth. I'm being brave again now. I'm trying to get on that grass and show you that's Stadland over there. Beautiful sky, isn't it? I'm impressed with that sky. It's kind of just lingering. It's not threatening rain. It's not threatening anything. It's just saying, have a nice day. <laughs> I, I, you have to bear me up with some of these films. I, I'm trying to do a three-point turn here. Here we go. So now we're getting to uh, where there's uh, a lift that goes down to the front, to Southbourne Beach. I wonder if they take scooters. Never asked them. 
and down there in front is a zigzag. I wonder if the fisherman had a zigzag back in the day. Or did he have to clamber down the cliff? No, uh, interesting thought. But you can see, this is a beautiful area. It's, it's very popular for people who are walking dogs, or just people walking. There's me having a go at people walking when I'm sitting comfortably on a scooter riding through. So all of these areas I'm going, I did parks and gardens, but I think this is in, in the same thing. This is nice areas where you can just walk along and enjoy the good views, which there are plenty in Bora. There are, there are some good viewpoints on the west cliff of Bournemouth, but I think the best are here on the east cliff. Now we come to it. Look at some of these buildings on the left. They're not hotels. They're Owned. People buy their flats, the balconies, and they can't be cheap. They can't be cheap. See, this, this is the many walkways you can get. As I said, it's good for walkers, good for joggers, and ideal for dogs. Here we go. So, this is a long route, it's Southbourne Overcliff Drive and I'm pursuing all the way to Hensbury Head. That's my goal. For you Elka, that's my goal. And it's a good long route. I know I've done Christchurch on my scooter which has got about a 35 mile radius. But I've got a feeling that Edgeby Head is a bit further than Christchurch. But as you can see, look, so if you was walking along here and you was able to stop and look over the cliff tops, you get such a beautiful view. It is the best place in Bournemouth to my mind. I'll give it 10 out of 10. East Cliff of Bournemouth is the best place in Bournemouth. If you come to Bournemouth, go to the East Cliff. And the beaches too, they're more quiet, they're quieter. If you go to the Bournemouth beach, it's packed. In fact, when it gets really busy, you're lucky if you can get a place to put your towel down and sit. But if you go to Southbourne, or, or you go to East Cliff, around this area, it's more of a private beach. I mean, look at this walk. Look at this walk. Look at the sea there. The sea is quite calm, isn't it? Although it's a windy day, look at the sea. I've got a feeling we're going to be more immigrants coming across today because that sea is perfect. Look at it. You can walk on that sea. I stopped it just to show that, just how wonderful that sea is. And the view from this part of the cliff, on the east cliff. Look at the view. I think I turned around, didn't I? I think I turned around it just to show you a backdrop. Yeah, here we go. See, I'm really good at this. <laughs> if I say so myself. I'm, there you go, I'm turning around, and over there, that's Stadland. Look at the view you got from this point in the East Cliff of Bournemouth. 
It's beautiful. I'm having trying to have a, give you a better shot. Here you go. Yeah, that's Stadlin over there. Old Harry Rocks. I haven't got a zoom on this camera because I can't show that, but that's what old Harry Rocks is. Right there, that's Stadlin. So I'm now going to have to do a three point turn again. Bear with me. Uh, I've done my training. I'm very good. Here you go. I'm on it. I told you. It's good. And bear in mind, I'm, I'm still on route for Hengersby Head. So now we're back on what they call Southbourne Overcliff Drive. Notice the expensive apartments on the left. I bet they're not even living there. I bet they're just holiday homes. Ah, oh, yeah. This is... I hate this pavement. I, don't, I should have crossed over. It's too narrow. The, the road is quite wide, but... This pavement is now, and you'll see more later on because they stick blooming lampposts right in the middle. Look at that lamppost there. Not on the, I'm not on the edge, but right in the middle. And I've got to try and get around it. Uh, here we go. Uh, blooming. Here we go. I've got more things going on. She didn't seem to have a clue, does she? Well, you just have to live with that. So I'm, I'm, I'm travelling down this narrow pavement. As I said, I should have crossed over, because this is just too narrow. Ridiculous. Oh, well, hang on. There's no blimmin' lamppost coming up. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Look at it. It's right in the middle. It's not on the edge. It's in the middle. I've got to get round it. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, done it. Done it. Now we're coming to a, an area. which you can turn left up any one of those roads and you get to the south one. And if you look to your left, you can, or even right, you can see beautiful homes in a lovely spot right on the cliff tops. of the beach, if you like. Look at those beautiful homes. Balconies, all sorts. Now, if, if you're a first time buyer, <laughs> forget, you're not gonna get one of them. You've gotta be on the top of the ladder to get one of them. But even if you know a granny who lives in one of these flats, in one of these homes, She's more liable to have to sell it to pay for her care. So forget that. Keep saving, keep working hard. You'll never get one of those lovely places. Look at them. Life ain't fair, is it? Some people get that, many people don't. But they're, they're all beautiful homes around it. Despite, look at it, look at the building, look at them. Despite 
the, the people who live there, I still enjoy the buildings. When I say despite the people, well, they're just blooming lucky, aren't they? They don't hate them. They're just lucky. Look at that. All balconies, all overlooking the cliff tops. They wake up in the morning, go on a balcony with a cappuccino or whatever, and a croissant, and look across the bay. Look at them all. They've all got balconies. Every one of them, look. Balconies. Everywhere. All facing south. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. This is a very nice but extremely wealthy area. But I do like to look at the, the houses. Look at that one. Lovely. Now it comes this roundabout. If I go left, I'm right into the heart of Southbourne. But I'm not going left. I'm going carrying on through the cliff top. Look at that building. How quaint is that? And it's right on the cliff top. Overlooking the sea. Lucky people having that. This is a long journey for me. I was getting a bit worn out by it. I thought if I bit off more than I can chew, I did promise Elka I would do ends for head, and that's what I'm doing. But by here, I was going, oh God, this is hard work. You, you, all right, you might think I'm on a scooter and I'm just sitting down, but although the camera's not showing it, my scooter's jumping up and down, and I'm getting worn out. I feel like I'm I could have walked it easier. I'm getting, listen to it, rumbling. Can you hear it? That's me. That's my body rumbling there. Jumping up and down on this run. And it's a good run. In a car, it doesn't take long. But then you don't get to see what, I'm, what you're seeing now on my scooter. See, a lot of people, they go around filming and usually walking. At least for me, uh, on scooter, you're getting to see more because I'm able to do that distance and fairly quickly compared to somebody walking. See, there you go. We're now, we're now there's a car park there. Oh, that car park. That brings back memories to me. When I was a home care worker, it was about 7 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day, and I had a call, I think it was, I think it was about up past 7 or something, and I, so I had a half an hour to spare. So I thought, I'll, I'll go in that car park and have a sandwich that I bought with me and just sit across the bay and enjoy the, the view. And I was the only one in that car park. And suddenly a car park attendant turned up in a car, Jobsworth, and he said, have you bought a ticket? I said, no, I've just arrived. I said, feel my engine, I've just arrived. And he said, all right, so I had to walk across, buy a ticket. This is Christmas Day in the morning, half past blooming seven. And then he, he said to me, well, you haven't parked very prettily, have you? 
look, because I just parked across maybe two bays, but there was nobody else there. I was the only one. Here it was on Christmas Day, having a go at me. I thought, happy Christmas to you, mate. Happy Christmas to you. As you can see that the clouds in front have stayed pretty much the same, but they're, they're interesting, aren't they? I've never looked at clouds like that before. Look, they just sit there. It's threatening and saying, Oh, it's all the day. Or, or, or do you want some rain? Because there's a few black spots up there, isn't it? So I don't know if we're going to get some rain. Apparently, what I heard on the radio today was England or Britain split. Between good weather and bad weather. I, I, I'm moving off ground now. To, see, I'm so good here, I'm giving you more shots across the bay. Getting back on the track here. Look at that skewer. Put mine to shame. That must be about three, four thousand quid, that skewer. Skewers can cost as much as cars these days. I'm still plodding on. There's still a way to go to hang Gisby Head. At least the payments are decent, aren't they? The payments are a lot better than what I'm usually used to. So I'm happy about that. I hope you're bearing with me while you watch me on my long journey to Hengersbury Head, at least you can sit on your comfy sofa and watch the journey. But I had to do it, and it was a bit of a rough ride. Look at these buildings again. See, I'm always going on about buildings because I, I, I love architecture. Look. Beautiful buildings. All these houses. No balconies look left and right. But they're not that's a boring building, isn't it? It's like a square box. Oh, I don't like that one. But other I, I, I don't know. I'm looking at buildings more than looking at the area or the scenic views. Oh God, I'm impressed by some of these buildings. And they've all got balconies. And you can guarantee they're all very, very expensive. I think I'm getting closer now to Hensby Head. I said it's a long run. But I'm pushing my way forward, <laughs> trying to get there, thinking, God, why did I try this? But no, I'm adventurous. Who dares wins, as Del Boy says. This is just another side of Bournemouth. That 
needs to be put up on YouTube. Not just Bournemouth Square, it's easy there, but this is on the outskirts. This is like South one. Right, we're carrying on forward, heading towards Hengisbury Head. But again, I'm looking at the buildings. Beautiful buildings. Look at the house in front on the left. Lovely building. Something else going on there. Bet they're building an extension to make it even better than what it is. Now, this is where I'm now heading into Hengisbury Head. This is what we've all been waiting for. And this is a path that I'm following. That's leading me towards the famous historic site. You can see it in front, that's Hensby Head. Can you see it? Now, when I was a bit younger, And when my partner was alive, Rolf, we, we climbed to the top of that and I've got video. If you look back on some of my 80s or 87, 97, no, 97, 98 videos, I've got film of me actually on the top of that head video. Uh, filming it, so, but now I'm on a scooter, not so thick, I'm not going to climb it. <laughs> I'd need an ambulance to come and get me if I did. So instead I'm going to try and follow the route that Elka talked about, the routes around Hengisbury Head. And that's that's where I'm going now. But, I mean, you, when I came here before, I came in a car along that road. So, I've not been along this track before, either walking or now on the scooter. This is a pavement, I suppose. On the other side, there isn't a pavement. It's on this side. So I've got to follow it right the way through to try and get to Hensbury Head. It's a bit of a walk, you know, if you want to go to Hensbury Head. Got to be a bit of a walker like these people. It's a fair old route. I mean, it's on the tip of uh, the seven miles of um, Sandbanks. To Hensby Head. It's on the very tip, and the Isle of Wight, as you saw when I was coming up, is not far away. In fact, if you go up to Hensby Head, you can see Isle of Wight and film it, photograph it very closely. So it's a bit of a bit of a track. How come they got that pathway down? Surely they haven't got cable TV down here. So now we've come to what you might call the entrance to Hensby Head. And this is like the cafeteria. We're looking for a way to get through. Like barricades here. A bit like Belfast in the old days. I was looking for a way to get through. 
Uh, I think I found it. I think I found it. Swing round. It's like a cafeteria, this place. See, barricades. What's going on here? You really, if you want to see Hengsbury Head, you really got to climb it. So this is the best I can do, Elka. This is Hensbury Head. From a, a pedestrian point of view. So now I'm following down this track. But well, hang on, I'm going to turn off in a minute because I want to show you the railway train that you keep going on about. There it is. That's the train you talked about. It runs along the path I'm going to follow. I just hope I get to know when it's coming. Now this path is another good long walk. I'm very good at talking about people going on long walks when I'm on a scooter. So I stop off here and show you. the map of Hensbury Head. So now I'm ploughing on through. That is a kind of uh, another restaurant. Stacked on the right of that man when he first came here. It's, it's, a, it's a protection area, it's National Trust this area. But this path leads all the way down to the seafront. The furthest end of uh, Southbound. But this is Christchurch now, actually. We're in Christchurch now. We're not in Bournemouth anymore. We're not in Dorset. We're in Hampshire. This is Hampshire. Those clouds, they're, they're interesting, aren't they? They just sit up there saying, enjoy what you can. I've got something more coming. So I'm following this path. There's another path down there that probably leads around another area. Of Hensbury Head, but I've decided uh, I don't know. I carry on. I carry on with this route. There's a train go by. You can see it. So I'm carrying on through. Now, on the left there, in the foreground, that's actually Christchurch. I hope I get a bit more of that in later. So I'm plodding on down this path. And I turn my camera to the left to show you the bay. The bay that leads from Christchurch to Hensby Head. Um, in the video that I, I did back in 98 with Rolf, that it's on YouTube. We're actually on a little boat that brought us across from Christchurch to Hensby Head. And that's when we 
we walk to the top. So I have done this. So Elka, I'm hoping you're enjoying this uh, video as, as hopefully many other people are too. Because it's showing Bournemouth. Not just the Bournemouth beach with the pier and the shops and, and the town square, but this is on the outskirts of Bournemouth. Because it goes from, Bournemouth goes from, well, I would, say, I would include Christchurch. It goes from Christchurch to Poole, Sandbanks, and it's a vast area. And there's so many beautiful places you can go to. That's why I love living around here. I would never want to move anywhere else in the country. I've been all over, when I was doing van driving, I've been all over England. I've been up north, I've been everywhere. But nowhere is as beautiful as Bournemouth. Bournemouth, Pool and Christchurch. You can't beat it. See, this is where people should be jogging. <laughs> Not Why do people jog around town streets where all the cars are and all the fumes? This is where they should be jogging. So this, this truck now is uh, heading on down. <laughs> To be honest, I haven't got a clue where I'm going when I'm doing this. I'm just following it. I'm just following it. But I don't know. Uh, well, I do know where it leads. It leads to, like, the seafront. I've been showing you parks and gardens on my other videos, but look, this is just the same. Green, green, green. It's beautiful. It's good for walkers, dog walkers, cyclists. Joggers. And people like me on mobility scooters. But I can cover this on my scooter quite quickly. Anybody on foot, they would not get as much footage in as I'm doing. So I'm, I, I'm a once off here, aren't I? On my scooter. I don't mean anybody else is doing filming on a scooter. But I'm a scooter guru to Chris. I go everywhere. And I do request. So, Elka, you wanted Angus for your head. And I'm now giving it to you. Oh dear. Got a hold up here. I've got a bit of a hold up here. Kids on the skirts. Got a oh no, got got a car coming through as well. We all got pulled aside. Maybe I'll get through now. No, they block it again. They block it again. I hate it when I get stuck, especially when I'm filming, when I get stuck behind people. I'm just feeling them, filming them bums and not the scenery. So I'm swooping through now. Well, he said, at least they're going fast, so I can follow them. Got a bit of action here. Kids on scooters. 
for you. It's a bit downhill. So it's great for them, isn't it? They're shooting on through and I'm following behind them. Film in the action. I mean, they're not electric scooters, they're the ones you've got to work on. So I'm pushing them through now. I'm wondering, I'm starting to wonder. how far I've got and I'm starting to worry about the battery on my scooter. I know I said to Elka that I can do 35 mile radius but I'm thinking uh, I'm going to get back home again now because this is the furthest I've been. I've been to Christchurch but this is even further than Christchurch so I stopped here and thought, I'm not going any further, I'm going to turn back. Now down there are beach huts, and they're not, well they're more than beach huts. Almost blooming homes, and they cost a fortune. Now I'm coming back on myself now, and I thought I'd add this film to show you the bay of uh, Christchurch. It's a beautiful view, isn't it? That's Christchurch over there. And as I say, you can get a boat across from Muddiford. Is it Muddiford? But you can get a boat from Christchurch, across the bay, which will bring you to Hensbury Head. And Rolf and I did that back in the 97, 98, 98, we did that across the bay. This is a beautiful area. I mean, you can't beat it. Where else would you want to live other than here? Got the beautiful views, beautiful sea. It's absolutely perfect. And that sky is, I'm more interested in the sky, look at it. It's just like hanging low, hanging low. I'm hanging low. So I tried to film as much of Hensby Head but unless you go up there you can't really get and you can from a distance. So now this this video is coming to an end and this is the end part. I just sort of just come here and do a final sequence which is saying goodbye to Hensby Head, see you later. So I'm heading off home now. I've got a long way back. I think my battery's going to be okay. I think I've got enough to get me home again. So I hope you enjoyed the video because I've, I've really enjoyed making it and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So as I drive out of uh, now away from Hengersbury Head, I've got to go on the road. I can't go, on, there's no pavement on the left. Look, just got to follow the road. Bit scary, but I just carried on. But until uh, the next time, I hope you enjoyed this video because I've enjoyed making it and I hope you found it pleasurable to watch it. But look at that sky!
can't get it out of my head. That sky is beautiful. Bye for now. Bye. It's Chris. Bye.